Many Muslims in our society, they pray during the special days like Shab-e Barat or Shab-e Miraj, depending on Waif Ahadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. I can't find any authentic or Sahih Hadith regarding this. Can we do prayers or certain acts of worship based on these Waif Ahadith? Before I discuss regarding Shab-e Barat or Shab-e Miraj, I would like to mention regarding the blessed journey of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him in brief, Al-Isra wal Mi'raj. And on this very day, people, they celebrate this day and in the Indian subcontinent, they refer, it, they refer to it as Shab-e Barat or Shab-e Mi'raj. Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, it was a blessed journey of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, Surah Al-Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 1. Subhana al-ladhi asra bi'abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa al-ladhi barakna hawla li nuriyahu min ayatina. Innahu huwa sami'u al-basir. That blessed is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took, who took his servant, that is Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, from Bayt al-Haram in Mecca to Bayt al-Maqdis in Jerusalem whose neighborhood is blessed, to show him our signs. Inna huwa Samuel Basir, for he is the all-hearing and the all-seeing. Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, it was a blessed journey that our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, embarked upon. He was taken from Masjid al-Haram in Makkah to Bayt al-Maqdis in Jerusalem, and later on he ascended to the heavens. And he was shown paradise and hellfire. And he met the prophets and messengers of God. And during this very journey, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, he spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, to offer 50 times salah. When our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was returning, he meets Musa alayhi salam. And Musa alayhi salam, he tells our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, that go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reduce this number for your ummah will not be able to offer 50 times salah. So our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, he goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to reduce this number. And he comes back and while he's returning, he meets Musa alayhi salam. And Musa alayhi salam tells him that your ummah will not be able to offer even this. Then he goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reduces 50 salah and it is reduced to five daily prayer. While our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, is returning back, he meets Musa alayhi salam again. And Musa alayhi salam, he tells our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, that your ummah will not be able to offer even these five daily prayer. But our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he tells Musa alayhi salam that I... I'm ashamed to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again as I have gone to him several times and I've already requested him several times. And during this blessed journey, our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and five daily prayers were prescribed for the ummah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. But unfortunately, many of the Muslims, they do not even offer these five daily prayer. And the reward of these five daily prayer, it is equal to 50 salah. Because it's, every salah is multiplied by 10 times. So this was in brief regarding the blessed journey of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, Al-Isra wal-Mi'raj. Now coming back to your question regarding Shabi Barat or Shabi Miraj, and this is mainly practiced in the Indian subcontinent. That on this day of Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, and many people they say that it is the 15th of Shaban, they do specific acts of worship. Many people they even fast on this day. And many they base it on certain da'if or hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. But there is no authentic hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, which specifically says that we should do some specific ibadah on this day. 
there is no authentic hadith of our beloved prophet muhammad peace be upon him which prescribes us to fast or to do any dhikr or to offer some special salah on on this day now i would like to mention an important qaida an important ruling in islam as far as ibadat are concerned acts of worship are concerned to do any act of worship we require proof for it for example offering two raka of fard salah during the fajr prayer we have proof for it we have evidence for it a person cannot say that three raka is better than two raka that's the reason i will start offering three raka during the fajr prayer for every act of worship for every ibadah we require proof as far as muamalat are concerned daily routines are concerned that are not acts of ibadah everything is permitted unless proven otherwise everything is permitted unless there is specific evidence which prohibits us from doing something for example allah subhanahu wa taala says in the glorious quran in no less than four different places in surah al-baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 173 in surah al-maida chapter number 5 verse number 3 in surah al-an'am chapter number 6 verse number 145 and surah an-nahl chapter number 16 verse number 115 hurrimat alaykum al-maytatu wa ad-dam wa lahm al-khinzir forbidden for you food a dead meat blood flesh of swine and any food on which any other name besides allah's name has been taken so generally all food it is permitted unless there is specific evidence which proves that certain food they are prohibited for example pork the flesh of swine blood dead meat so that's the reason as far as muamalat are concerned everything is permitted unless proven otherwise Now, as far as Shabe Barat or Shabe Miraj is concerned, there is no authentic hadith which proves that we, that the Prophet peace be upon all the Sahabas, did any specific ibadah. So we should see to that we do not do any special ibadah on this day of Al Isra Wal Miraj, which they call as Shabe Barat or Shabe Miraj. And if we do any specific ibadah on this day, thinking that we will get special reward, whether it be fasting, whether it be offering special salah. then it would come in in the category of bid'ah ah, that is innovation and there are several ahadith of our beloved prophet muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him which stress upon staying away from bid'ah ah, that is innovation our beloved prophet muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him he has said man ahdatha fi amrina ma laysa min fa huwa rad that whosoever innovates in my religion that is not part of the religion he is not among us and there are several other ahadith of our beloved prophet muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him which stress upon this our beloved prophet muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him whenever he used to give the khutbah that is the sermons he used to stress upon staying away from bidah staying away from innovations and if it was good to do certain acts of worship on this day the prophet peace be upon him and the sahabas they would have done it but they did not do any specific act of worship on this day but if a person he generally has a habit of fasting for example a person fasts on mondays and thursdays and it coincidentally falls on this day which they refer to as shabe barat or shabe miraj then there is no problem for a person to fast on this day but specifically fasting on this day which they refer to as shabe barat or shabe miraj it is not established from the sunnah of our beloved prophet muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him and this should be totally avoided so we should see to that we follow the sunnah of our beloved prophet muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious quran surah al-maida chapter number 5 verse number 3 al-yawm akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam deena on this day i have perfected my religion upon you I have completed my favor upon you and i have chosen for you islam as your religion allah subhanahu our beloved prophet muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him he has laid down the guidelines for us so that's the reason we should follow the sunnah of our beloved prophet muhammad may peace and blessings be upon him and if we involve in bidah and innovation it will take us away from the sirat al mustaqim from the straight path so i hope that answers your question